بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله it's very important that we spend our time in this dunya with that which is أصلح لنا that which is beneficial and the most beneficial for us you know using our time wisely because our time is limited one day you will look back at this time and you may regret on how you spend it and that is advice to myself first and foremost and my brothers and sisters and there's so much in the souls so many texts uh, from the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which illustrate this very fact in this very point of using your time wisely don't waste your time in debates don't waste your time in sin don't waste your time by not making shukr thank showing gratefulness to Allah Azza wa Jal and by ceasing or refraining from praising him to barak wa ta'ala for the many many blessings that he's bestowed upon you listen to this hadith of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it is has been explained by sheikh dr salih bin ghanim asidlan rahmatullahi rahmatan wasi'a uh, in his book Arba'een hadithin kullu hadith fi arba khisal. So in this hadith, we will learn that the importance of using our time wisely and the importance of being thankful and grateful to Allah and the importance of indulging in that which is lawful for us. An Abi Barzat al Aslami قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تزول قدماء عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن عمره فيما أفناه وعن علمه فيما فعل وعن ماله من أين أكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وعن جسمه فيما أبلاه أخرجه ترمذي. This is a hadith in, in Tirmidhi. In is and it is the hadith of Abi Barzata al Aslami radiallahu ta'ala anhu in which he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said that the servant on the day of judgment uh, will be asked about his age. You know how he spent his time and his knowledge and how he practiced and his wealth and where he obtained it from and what did he spend it upon and his body and how he used it. And this is in Tirmidhi. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the general meaning is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given the servant so many ni'am, so many blessings. And all of us can testify, regardless of the test and the struggles and the trials and tribulations we, we uh, have in our lives, that we have so many blessings. We can't even begin to really truly be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thankful for all the blessings and benefits that we have. Just the fact that you have the chance to listen, that means your hearing is probably intact. And the fact that your breathing is not labored, ta'ala, meaning that you can breathe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you another opportunity to wake up with a positive attitude and do righteous deeds. To be of those either who chooses imma shakirin or imma kafura to either be grateful or e either be ungrateful to be of the khasirin or be of the faizin to be of either the those people who who are who have benefit and are the muflihun those successful ones or those who are khasara those who are uh, who who don't have the blessings and the benefit and they have sinfulness and they uh, lose in this life. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Asr, wa asr inna l-insana lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amanu salihati wa tawasu bil-haqqi wa tawasu bil-sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time, wa asr inna l-insana lafi khusr. Verily mankind is at a loss. Then he makes istithna, he makes the exception. Illa al-ladhina amanu, except those who believe. So that's ahli iman, you have to have iman. You have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The six pillars uh, of iman, practicing Islam, the pillars of Islam. Illa ladina amanu. So that's that's iman. And it requires ilm. You need knowledge to know what you believe. Illa ladina amanu wa amanu salihat and doing righteous deeds. So it's not sufficient that we memorize and we have books and things like this. We don't practice. Ya ladina amanu lima tukuluna ma la tafanu. O you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all of our many shortcomings. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Illa ladina amanu wa amanu salihati wa tawasu bil haqqi wa tawasu bil sabr. So that they are giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means they practice, uh, they gain knowledge and believed. They practice that knowledge. They call to that knowledge, giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refuting that which goes against that knowledge, bid'a, kufr, uh, ilhad, wa zandaka. And they are patient upon that path. It's a patient path. It's a patient path, the path of da'wah. The point is, is to be cognizant of the ni'am that Allah gives you, the blessings, and use your time wisely, and use your health wisely, and use your wealth wisely in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh says, So here the Shaykh is actually talking about giving us a general meaning of this hadith. He's showing and showing us the relationship of the things the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith. He says, and from those greatest blessings is a blessing of time. You know, having free time. Just the fact that we have free time now, alhamdulillah, I'm not at work and we can devote some time to what I love and that is calling to Allah and going back and studying and reminding myself and my brothers and sisters. That's a ni'mah from, 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 have the ni'mah min ni'amillah. It's a blessing to have free time. Okay, even if you use it, as long as you're using it for something at least permissible, mubaat, you want to play football, okay. If you want to do this, but take some time out to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to study uh, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, uh, from those uh, blessings is the blessing of free time and the strength of the body. So the strength of the body, what, what good is that? Of course, we know about defending ourselves. We know we like to get swole and get in the gym. We like to do this. We like to do that. But here, in the context <coughs> of what the Ulama mentioned the Qawwata Bedan, this is in order to Yukum Bita'atillah. It's in order to perform the duties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do. So there's a great blessing, there's a difference. As we get older, we see. And if you've ever been injured as a young person, and for example, you can't pray, you, you play football, you twisted your ankle, you busted your knee, whatever the case may be, and you're praying sitting. And you then you have an idea, you just get a glimpse of what the elderly experience. Some of them, they need someone to help them to get to the masjid, but they still come. And some of them, they, they can only sit during their salat, but they still pray. So they're actualizing the ni'mah. And many of us are blessed to have sound bodies and we can, we can pray. We can come to the masjid, but we may not even come to the masjid. And we may not even pray. Wallahu musta'an. So it shows us, Ahabatifillah, that the quwwa to bedan, the strength, the true strength of the body and the, the, the strong mu'min is the one who's using their physical strength in order to be obedient to Allah. And that can come in many, many ways, as we mentioned, in order when you're youthful, it's easier for you to pray, it's easier on your body, 
okay, prostrating in your knees and things like this and the pains that you experience as you get older and back pains and so on and so forth. Also, even defending the community, okay, you, when you're younger and you have strength, maybe you're in a better position to defend yourself and your family and your brothers and sisters in Islam. Okay, so there's many aspects to that, that quwa to bedin, that strength in the body. And also saving your wealth, having ni'mah min ni'amillah, the fact that Allah has given you risk, and then you're able to save it, you're able to use it for good. These are all ni'am, these are all blessings from Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa fiqh fi deen wa dunya, then he mentioned, the last thing, he said, and it is having fiqh, having understanding of the religion and the dunya. Fiqh fi deen wa dunya. So having wisdom even in this worldly life of how to uh, get around in the world and the sciences of the world and the things that are going to help you progress in this life, but most importantly they're going to give you that ilm nafia that beneficial knowledge, which the scholars when they refer to beneficial knowledge, amumin generally, especially the earlier scholars, that they refer to al nafia meaning beneficial knowledge. Uh, of course, that comes from a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he, uh, the dua, Allahumma alaka ilm nafi ruskan tayyibu amalun mutqabilan. Oh Allah, I seek, I, I, I ask you for ilm nafi for beneficial knowledge. Ruskan tayyiba, or wasi'a, you know, and, 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 and an abundance of rizq. You know, wealth or or wealth in its various forms. What is can tayyib? You know, halal, tayyib, good wealth. Wa amalun mutaqabbilin and accepted deeds, meaning that your deeds you you you're praying to Allah for good deeds to be accepted. All of that's in accordance with this hadith and actualizing the ni'mah of, of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And so that ilm nafiya that fiqh fi, is fiqh fi deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Man yura the law, man yura the law bi Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Man salaka tariqin yal talmasuhu bi almin sahal Allahu lahu tariqin al jannah." Whenever Allah wants good for a path, he, uh, good for a person, uh, or whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to jannah. So, as we mentioned countless times, what did the Salaf used to say about uh, seeking knowledge? The qalu uh, salaf talab al talab al jannah. Seeking knowledge is seeking paradise because if you're seeking al nafi, which is knowledge of the Sharia, knowledge of Islam, that means you're seeking the knowledge that's going to bring you closer to Allah and help you to practice what Allah wants from you and to to better understand what is required of you and uh, to better understand your Lord Subhanahu wa Taala, who He is, His uh, as far as tawheed, tawheed. Arububiyya, Tawheed, Al-Uluhiyya, Tawheed, Al-Asma'i wa Sifat. Knowing and understanding the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He's the provider and sustainer and the creator of everything. And Al-Uluhiyya, that all worship belongs to Him, Tabarak wa ta'ala. And Al-Asma'i wa Sifat, the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this falls under Ilm al nafia and all this is going to help you uh, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better, and that's the ni'mah of ilm al nafia The Prophet وسلم, also said, which is in accordance with this hadith, قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ إِذَا مَاتَ الْمَرِي إِنْ قَتَ الْعَمَلَهُ إِنَّ مِنْ ثلاث. That if a person dies, his, de his deeds cease, except three. Uh, الْعِلْمْ يُنْتَفَعَ بِي uh, so knowledge that إذا انقطع العمله إذا مات المري انقطع العمله إلا من ثلاث العلم النافي العلم ينتفع به والصدقة جارية وعلم ينتفع به وولد صالح يدعو له. So the three things the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned in this hadith. He said, first, uh, jariya, the continuous charity. So th th what does that come under? That comes to if, you, if Allah has favored you with wealth, or at least to be a part of something good with your wealth, that you're using it, and after you die, it's still benefiting people. Like you built a, a, a well. You built a building, a waqf, that the people can live in 
for free or discounted or whatever what have you people live in for free students of knowledge live there or you build a uh, uh, an Islamic school or Islamic institution a markaz al-ilm markaz al-sunnah to spread the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and other deeds of khair that are continuous after you die something that feeds the poor you know you planted a garden and the people are still eating and benefiting after you die from it hadha sadaq jariya wa ilm yantafa bi and knowledge that the people benefit from so maybe you wrote books maybe you taught people and you left students and they benefited others and they you know look at all the the ilm nafi we have here look at imam bukhari ahlu bid'ah wa ahlu sunnah have have uh, go to bukhari and go to to sahih muslim what do you think those great imams, Imam Anawawi, what do you think the, those great imams are getting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reward that every household practically, or many households in the Muslim world from the East and the West, Qadim and Wahadith, and in the past up until now, say Imam Bukhari uh, mentioned in this chapter, you know, mentioned in Hadith that they read from Bukhari and Muslim, those imams are getting reward from Allah Azza wa Jal for that. This is knowledge that they benefit and they've been dead a thousand years. And then having righteous children that supplicate for you after you die. May Allah bless us with all of that. So those are all uh, things we should concentrate on in this life and how we can benefit from our time in this dunya because it's short and it's limited. And the way we can show a shukr lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the heart and with the lisan and with the jawar, with the limbs. So in our heart, being grateful and thankful for the blessings that Allah has given us. On your lisan, by mentioning it, making dhikr, but also mentioning, saying, you know, Allah favored me with this. Not in order to spread jealousy and enmity, but in order to mention the ni'am Allah has blessed you with. Allah meant, blessed you with a new car. Alhamdulillah. And you show the people by showing them the good and mentioning it in a, in a way of khair. Wa amalan salih. And righteous deeds that you did with your limbs. All of these are ways to show shukr for those ni'am that Allah has given you. And using your time for khair and righteousness. Uh, and lastly, some of the things the Shaykh mentioned that are benefits from this hadith. He said, first, this hadith is a warning for the Muslim to not waste their time in this life with those things that don't give them any benefit in their religion or in this life. So don't be a time waster doing things that don't benefit you in this life nor the hereafter, especially the hereafter. Secondly, is that to have yaqeen. Be, rest on certainty that everything a person does, they're going to be held accountable for. Rest certain that there's a day of judgment. Have them in, these are from the pillars of, uh, of Iman. That there's a day of judgment. We're going to be held account for what we said, what we did, what we believed. So rest assured about that. And the third thing is that a person... Uh, this is also, this hadith is a warning uh, against wasting your time and your youth and your wealth and your knowledge by not practicing. So that is a very imperative lesson for us all to gain. And may Allah forgive us all of our many, many sins. And may Allah bless us all with ilm al-nafi, ruskin tayyib, wa amil al-muttaqabbilin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.